What's up, Internet? Um, this is JD coming at you. Um, this is a video. Um, I got really bored last night, so I was watching Deadliest Warrior. And I've always had this opinion for a long time that Deadliest Warrior kind of has a lot of things that they do inaccurately. They don't get them right. So I'm going to just do a video. It's kind of a... It's called Deadliest Warrior Recap. I'm going to go over... Um, not every episode. I'm, I don't know... I own web firearms, but I'm not a big, um, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm an expert on firearms. I know a lot more about ancient warfare than I do about firearms and like armor and stuff like that. So I'm going to stick more to those. Um, and I think a lot of the things I do are, or my opinions are pretty accurate. So if you disagree, more power to you. But, um, basically I'm just going to lay out in the first episode here, a handful of things. I'll go over some episodes I think they got right. Um, and without further ado, here we go. Here's the thing that I think they don't lay out first. What are the parameters of the test? Okay, that's the first thing. What I mean by, okay, how does it start? Um, do you just randomly put two guys on a battlefield and randomize the spot and they're right next to each other? Or they're, um, one's behind some trees and the other one's not? How do they do that? Is it just an open field? They don't really explain that. So I'm going to go off of all the things I say are off of assuming that they are showing up on a hundred foot long field, okay, hundred feet, hundred yards. I'm sorry, hundred yards, and they are coming at each other. They they can't escape. They can't run. They're eventually going to meet. Now whether they meet at the fifty yard line or one waits for the other, it's just depends. Okay. I also am going to do this, assuming that every one of these um, the member the the warriors, I should say, are not Duke Nukem. <laughs> or James Bond and Goldeneye, the video game. You cannot walk into battle carrying six weapons. It's you can, you can carry some. Some of the better warriors in history, and I'll get to that in, in a while, are equipped with the ability to carry multiple or even all their weapons. They are equipped with that ability. Okay? Um, not every warrior is going to have that. I don't believe you walk into battle carrying four different weapons. Okay? It, you're, it will, will destroy your mobility. Some weapons are very heavy. With that weapon, you can't have other things. So I don't think you're going to be able to walk into battle with every one of them. I think the way the battle should be done is the battle should be done where you have a weapon that should be a constant. For example, if you are a samurai, your sword, your katana is constant because you can put it in a hilt on your hip. But you can't have that and a 7-foot long spear and a 7-foot and a bow and a 35-pound kanabo um, club. You can't have all of that. You can't carry it all at once. Okay, so I think you have the combinations. You can have the combinations where you have the bow and the katana. You can have the spear, the Naginata spear, than the katana, and the kanabo. And you should have those three. And if there's a thousand attempts, you have three hundred and thirty-three point three, and it's randomized, and you get one of those three when you start out. That's how it should be. Okay, um, that's that's my opinion on how it should be. Okay, you shouldn't be able to walk into battle carrying four different weapons. It's 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 nearly impossible, okay? So when I go through these, a handful of these, I will play that out with that in mind, okay? That you can't walk into battle carrying every weapon. I will lay out where I think that you can have a consistent weapon and then you have other weapons that you have to carry with by losing something else. Okay, I'll go over that. So first with uh, anything else I want to go over. I also think there should be should be three specific tests for every weapon. Um, if you have a weapon and you're fighting against no armor, you, you test two things. You test uh, cut and stab. That's simple. Cut and stab. If it cuts and stabs, it kills. Okay? And how effective is one cut and how effective is one stab? If you're going against armor, you do the cut, a stab, see if you can cut through the armor, stab through the armor, and then you do a pressure pat underneath the, the, to measure... Um, like blunt force trauma. And I'll get into that more as as I progress, okay? Um, the first episode is Apache versus Gladiator. This one I actually think they got right. The reason why they got most of this right is because there's not a lot of armor, so there wasn't a lot of margin of that armor error, that I like to call it. Um, gladiators have some armor, like some here on their arms, and they have helmets. It's irrelevant, okay? Um, if you look at this battle, um, the Apache... Or the yeah the Apache wins 667 kills to 333. Um, 
I think it's about right. I do think that the Apache should be a little bit more lopsided to the win. Reason why is the Gladiator does not have any armor, and it does not have a. Um, the, the Gladiator also does not have any kind of shield to prevent any projectile weapons. The Native American or the Apaches have a bow and arrow. Game over, right there. Game over. You have a bow and arrow. Um, you can carry a bow and arrow, and the thing I like about most of their weapons is this is one of the weapons that can carry most of the weapons on the battlefield. You can carry a tomahawk or two along with a knife while you have your bow and arrow and maybe the war club. Maybe the war club is one thing that might be a variation between that and the bow and arrow. I get that um, if you want to go that route. But you can carry a dozen knives on you and you can carry two or three tomahawks and you can have all that on your hip while you're shooting your bow and arrow. Okay? So you can probably use the, the bow and arrow and the war club as your alternate, and you always have the constant of, let's just say two tomahawks and three knives. Let's just say that, okay? So with that being said, um, I do think the Apache would win this regardless. And with the bow and arrow, the bow and arrow only got 188 kills in the sim. I think it's a little bit more weighted. I think it should be about, should be a little bit higher. I'm not, on other tests, I actually go through the amount of number I think the kills should be. Um... And I realize all this is done in a simulating computer. I'm just going off my opinion, and I think it would vary and change certain things. Um, other than the War Club, the Apache was effective at all three distances. And the thing is, every weapon they have is medium range at least, and further except for the War Club. Okay, And what I mean by that is the Tomahawk. Yes, it's a good hand-to-hand -hand close combat weapon, but it's also can be thrown. And Gladiator has nothing protecting this. You get that in their chest, crush their rib, claps their lung, dead. Okay, knife. They they show a demonstration of three knife throws, instant kill, on all three of those knife throws. You don't even have to get in range. Nothing the gladiator has except for a sling, which can kill. I'll give it that credit. It can kill uh, with the perfect shot. It can kill, but you have nothing that is range. Yet, and when I say short range is like hand close combat, mid range I would say is about ten ten yards, uh, ten five to ten yards from each other and in long range is bow and arrow and bow and arrow has a range of about 70 yards okay so you can literally pepper them with five or six arrows before they ever get close to you that's five chances to kill a gladiator before they ever get close to you so I don't think this battle will be even close it should be close to about 700 to 300 um, I think the long the bow and arrow should have the most kills personally but Apaches were expert knife fighters so I understand why they have that so I'm not going to say too much on that. I think they got most of that correct. Um, I'm not going to talk on the actual ones with firearms except for one. And I'll get to that here in a little bit. The Shaolin Monk um, has a is basically um, won the battle 692 to 308. I think this is about right. You have a weapon that is basically sharp all over. Twin Hooks which is a mid to close range weapon. It can block, it can defend, it can deflect. There's sharp handles, there's sharp handles here. There's spiked ends. You can slash, you can cut, you cook them together and it gives you, it doubles the distance of the weapon. There's just nothing you can really do to counter that. And the Maui Warrior did pretty good with most of the weapons, except for the fact that Twin Hooks got six, almost 600 kills by themselves. Um, none of the other weapons by the Maui War the Shaolin Monk were very effective. Um, the Amiri Piercers are vicious, but when you, you get in close, you're in Maui territory. They're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger, and their weapons are made up close. Um, uh, and the, I don't think that, I, I don't think a staff has that, gets that many kills. I just don't. Um, I would assume that the twin hooks would be the, the weapon they carry in every battle, every fight. Um, but I don't see them being able to carry twin hooks and then carrying a staff or a whip or an armory piercers. None of their weapons are able to be carried with anything else except for maybe the chain. Um, so I don't see too many of these weapons being carried with each other. So that might be one of the, the faults in the fight. So if you get any of these other weapons against the Maui Warriors, any, any of the Maui Warriors weapons except for the Singray Spear, I think the Maui Warrior wins against any other weapon except for the twin hooks. Twin hooks are the best. I think twin hook wins every fight. Except for if you come up against what's called the uh, it's not the the tiasha or whatever it's called, and what it is, it's a it's a long it's like a it's a staff with a sharpened end on one point, and then the wood it's like curved and then comes to a point, so it has a lot of trauma. It can 
basically break a back in half with it, with a hit. And then it has a sharp, jagged rock on the other side for stabbing. Um, but I think for the most part, they got the, the results this and right. The Maui Warriors are going to win. They are more talented. They are more skilled. But they are very passive. That's one of the problems. And none of these people have armor. And you're talking about an advanced metal weapon in the... Um, in the, the twin hooks, advanced metal, um, against, you could call it primitive, it's not really primitive, because they actually did the best they had with what they had to work with, but pretty much primitive um, weaponry from the Maui Warriors, with a shark tooth club, it's actually made out of shark tooth, um, the Tiahu spear, and then you have like a piece of, it's like, it's a hard piece of rock, basically made into a club, which is effective, but it's made into a club. So this one they got pretty much correct. Um, so it's only 10 minutes in, um, that is basically, it's not how everybody is going to be. I agree with the results of both of these. Maybe a little bit more realism when it comes to, oh, what are they actually going to be physically able to go into the battle with? <laughs> that's that's basically what I'm going to break it down to. Um, what are they going to physically be able to go into the battle with? I think physically, you can't carry all five of these, all four of those weapons. The Maui Warrior can carry the, the Mirror, on club, which is a green club, it's about that long, and it's just hard, and it can break through steel. It broke through three pieces of steel, um, oh, three pieces of clay, I'm sorry, like thick clay. Steel broke through one, that thing th broke through three and shattered them. It didn't even just break them, it shattered them. Okay, a steel knife, a modern steel knife broke through one. That's how blunt and damaging these were. They also tested on like a cow skull, cut the cow skull right in half on one swing. It, it's very, it's a very vicious weapon. And then the Shahi uh, spear. I think you always have the mirror, and then the other three weapons rotate. I think that's the best way to, to do that. I think you always have with the Shaolin monk. You always have the chain whip and the mirror piercers. I think you can keep those on you at all times, and you can mo rotate twin hook and staff. Yeah, I think if you have the staff, you die. That's basically how it plays out. So that is a factor. Um, to me, but I think they got, for the most part, they got the battle right. So th these, all the videos are not going to be like this. Most of the video will be about one episode, for the most part, and I will break down that episode weapon by weapon, test by test, so on and so forth. Alright? So, enjoy my videos. I'm going to post them pretty quickly. They're pretty easy to make, so I can make them pretty fast. See ya.